I want to welcome you to our session today, Linking Up to Move On, a collaborative between Appalachia IU8, Central Intermediate Unit 10, and Tuscarora Intermediate Unit 11. I'll take a couple minutes here at the beginning to kind of introduce ourselves. My name is Megan Horsch. I am an educational consultant at IU8. I sit on um, several different initiatives along with the um, behavior, MTSS academic, trauma skilled schools, brain steps. And so um, I come to educational consultant position after spending about 20 years as a school psychologist in various school districts. So um, I was excited to move into this position about four years ago. Um, my first year was the 1920 school year. Um, so that was an exciting way to kick it off. I'll let um, Dawn Moss go next and introduce herself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dawn Moss. I'm from IU10, and I've uh, been working in the area of PBIS since 2008. So it has been a long time, and I'm very privileged to work with some awesome schools. Uh, my coworker, Christine Zanker, and I have almost 50 teams that we work with. And um, when you're supporting that many teams, you need support. And that's what we're gonna be sharing with you uh, today, a little bit about that. And Brad? Hi, I'm Brad Thays. I am a consultant and a special ed supervisor for the IU8. Um, I work a lot with Megan uh, in the area of behavior, but I also sit on the secondary transition initiative as well as supervised programs like our day treatment, our residential, and our corrections ed programs. So welcome everyone. I, if you have um, a moment, I'd love for you to put in chat where you're joining us from and your current role. So we can kind of have an idea of who's, there's, um, who's out there. There's just a small group of us, so we can uh, personalize it a little bit and see where you're from. Uh, Winber School District. Erie. I hope it's not uh, too cold or snowy with that lake effect snow. I went to college undergrad in Meadville. Uh, so we got lots of snow. Uh, TAC from IU 13. Jeanette City School District. Grew up in Armstrong County. So um, that's a nice little area out there in Western Pennsylvania. IU 13, Warren County Instructional Coach. Awesome. Oh, great. Armstrong Middle School, Bucks County State College. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing that. I'm glad to see so many people in such a wide variety, because that's one of the things we're going to talk about today is how linking up and collaborating can really support everyone in different positions, um, different areas. And so without further ado, we'll kind of um, talk a little bit about how we landed as a collaborative team. Uh, we are situated in the central part of the state. And let me apologize. We do have another team member that um, was helped us prepare this and just wasn't able to make it um, this morning from IU 11, um, Julie Brown. So I just wanna make sure we uh, mentioned her name as well. Um, but you can see the three IUs, IU 8, 10 and 11 there in, um, our map is we're all situated in the central part of Pennsylvania. Um, we have similar de demographics, so it was easy for us to link up, but we also have um, diversity in our demographics within our IUs. So the linking up between our IUs allowed um, us to really pair different districts together that have similar demographics and uh, diverse demographics. And you can see we do take up a large geographic part of the state. Um, right there in the middle, we go the whole way up here to the um, top and the whole way down to the Maryland border. Uh, and we are actually, we talk about this a lot, we're kind of situated, when we talk about Patton regions, we're in the central Patton region, but we're right on the edge of uh, Patton West as well. And so, uh, just a nice um, way for us to collaborate. The geographic part made us come together at first. But like I said, today, um, we wanted to talk about the benefits 
of collaborating in order to really better our individuals, our teams, our students, our schools. And what we found throughout the years, and the collaboration goes well before me, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, like I said, I've been here about four years, so it goes way back, um, well before that. But what we found is the benefits of collaboration is really um, felt not only with us as facilitators, we share resources, we collaborate on different initiatives, but it also benefits our teams because they have access to different opportunities in different districts and different buildings. It benefits our students where uh, they're able to network together. They're able to get different ideas, implementation, sustainability, and it benefits our student advisors. And so that's really what we're going to kind of how we structured the day to really kind of look at how this collaboration benefits those different partners and stakeholders. So to start with, we're gonna just highlight how it benefits us as um, facilitators. And I'm sure you've heard the saying, many hands makes light work. And that is particularly um, highlighted in how we collaborate. Um, it's nice to reach out to other districts or other facilitators. Here at IU8, I'm one of four, um, but I know at IU11, um, they have one or two, they're in transition right now. IU10, they have two facilitators. And so, like Dawn had mentioned earlier, supporting 50 school districts with two facilitators is a heavy lift. But being able to collaborate and pull our resources together for different events, um, for different publications is really a nice way, uh, a benefit for us as facilitators. Mm -hmm. Megan, can I just mention that over the years, we have also had facilitators from other IUs join us. Michael Lords joined us many years uh, in projects um, as well as many others. Uh, so we've also collaborated uh, outside of our region. Yes. Um, and what's nice about that as well is that these collaborations help us bring varied experiences. Um, like I said, I'm a school psychologist, but we, you know, there's teachers, administrators. Um, we have a facilitator that um, transitioned to education from mental health uh, community practices. And so bringing together this varied experience and skills and background really helps to foster a network um, that can be flexible see things from different perspectives, see the strengths, areas where we can improve. Um, so that collaboration helps us professionally because it gives us those different backgrounds and points of view. The collaboration we have with PBIS has led to other collaborations. So we've collaborated on school psych um, networking. We've collaborated on restorative practices, check and connect check in, check out. And, and so looking at building those relationships really helps in other initiatives as well, not just in PBIS. It helps us to evolve and problem solve. And that's something that we were talking about when we were kind of getting this presentation together um, is, you know, the discussions we have as we're planning helps us really to take a different perspective on things and evolve our way of thinking, our practices, and problem solve around roadblocks we might come into. And then finally, a benefit to us as facilitators is we can support each other in uh, TFI completion. We know that's uh, um, coming up here soon. We talked about that in the uh, opening State of the Union address. Um, but you know, just supporting in the paperwork, TFI completion. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brad to talk about how the collaboration has supported our PBIS teams. Oh, thank you, Megan. So yeah, many years ago, starting back around 2015, so into the team pieces, our teams, we decided that, like Megan said earlier, that we had several teams throughout the different regions, a good mixture of diversity. So we wanted to get people together and share ideas. Um, 
So started in 2015, you know, we figured we'd start with connecting coaches. The three IUs collaborated at different various ACT meetings that we were talking about, and we decided to connect coaches. So we were able to secure Dr. Tim Rungby, and um, because Dr. Rungby, he's one of the lead people of the state around PBIS. Uh, he analyzes the data and per puts out the executive summary. So we were able to secure him to um, do database decision making at the, our IU8 office in Altoona. We brought all the teams from IU10, 8, 10, and 11 to our office there. So in that training, we were thinking about what do people need? So we had new team member inductions and trainings. Um, we had various roundtable discussions that we set up and we had lead facilitators at the table so they could connect and um, talk about various topics in their schools and what they need to learn about. And this has been going on since 2015. We've held connecting coaches in different years since then. Uh, we've done it virtually. We've done a lot in person. We also had some fantastic guest speakers. And as you can see there, one of them may be joining us today, Dr. Erica Kruger. She, previous, prior to her working with Patton, she was here at the IU and was a big person to help push the connections and the networking opportunities that we've put on over the years. She helped us with the Connecting Coaches and the um, Student Team Summit that we're going to get into and the admin networking days. So um, moving on from the coaches there. Um, Brad, can I just add? Absolutely, that, yeah. Um, when Shonda presented for us, she actually was working at an IU. Oh, okay. and she She was awesome in tips. That was kind mm -hmm. of her thing. And yeah. we knew that. And so she actually came to our IU region and presented on tips for us, even though she was um, at another IU. So, like I said, we have worked with other IUs and their folks too. Yes. yes. And uh, I believe that one was in the state college region in the auditorium up there. I forget the name of the facility, but she presented on tips. Yes. So, um, other pieces that we worked with was the connecting administrators. We knew that admin, they're kind of secluded in their building, um, you know, for some of them. So they don't get out as much to connect on PBIS. They help make decisions. So we figured it'd be great to bring them together so they can talk about various topics that they wanted to talk about with other admins, some of the good things that they're going on, but also one of the challenges. As Dawn likes to say, it's the good, the bad, the ugly. And sometimes, you know, we figure we need to figure out how to overcome and navigate the challenges. So what better way than to ask people that are in the trenches with them and other pieces. So we had our first networking day for admin um, at IU 11. We brought up people from the various regions to talk about uh, different pieces there. So in that day, we had um, some great uh, topics here. We had some great admin presenting actually what they do in their school. Um, we had a principal panel at the end of the day where we had a series of questions that we went and got perspectives from the different principals that um, were there. So they would uh, tell about what they thought of, about the various topics in their own words and at their own building. So that was a great opportunity that we held as well. Um, people really liked it. We had a good turnout for admin, as you know, sometimes it's hard for them to get out of their buildings, but we had a, that piece. So then we had, uh, obviously, things shut down. So we began, we began to do some um, school climate and action coaches and action networking. We held this virtually. Um, right. It was an initiative that I uh, believe it started out with the climate networking between the three IUs and it sort of morphed into mm -hmm. creating a, you know, a bigger network. Go ahead, Dawn. Sorry. Right. So at our IUs, we wear many hats mm -hmm. and some of our PBIS facilitators also wore the school climate hat, which they very much go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so that is why we uh, formed those two projects together mm -hmm. and we held virtual coaches meetings. And we did that last year, every month after school. And uh, in another slide, I'll, I'll share with you uh, the topics, but we held this and we have a little asterisk there for lessons learned. Yeah. 
And we thought, so after we had a like 315 to four, and we thought that we would record the sessions. Now we did ask people to register. So we knew how many people were registered and only those that registered did we send the link to after uh, we had recorded. And one of the lessons we learned is we didn't have, our attendance wasn't as good as we had hoped for. And we think it was because people thought, I'll just watch that later. And whether they did or not, we couldn't keep track of. But um, our lessons learned is maybe we won't be recording those if we do choose to do this in the future. We didn't know if that hindered attendance or exactly what hindered attendance. But we did have those meetings. Um, the next slide shows the different topics that we covered. It was a wide array of topics. And it was nice because there were three IUs. We had a we all just took one month and presented something. And uh, I know Christine did the school climate and the MTSS framework. Uh, Gordon at IU 11 talked about the advanced tiers. And then we talked about the SEL. Megan did the trauma-informed practices, I know. Um, and I know restorative practices is something that's used in our region and is starting to be used in, re in uh, IU 8 and 11. And so we did a little overview of restorative practices and circles. One month, Megan led us in the equity hub looking at that equity hub. And we ended our year with a few schools from each region sharing what good things were going on in their area. And that's something we always try to highlight, whether we're talking with coaches, we're talking with administrators, or we here we have our monthly coaches meetings. We're all about pe people being able to share the good things they have going on. And so that was also um, highlighted all along, but that last meeting specifically, we had some presenters from the schools and they were able to share some great things they had going on. And I'll also just add, like this ties back into what I said earlier about the many hands making light work. Mm -hmm. We were able to offer monthly topics and coaching supports to all of our um, coaches, but we, we weren't necessarily the ones responsible for doing that every month. And so being able to kind of, you know, each take a month was, was a nice op option there. Mm -hmm. And because we all had different backgrounds and skills, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a nice point about that. Like you said, people have different skill sets and different backgrounds. So they chose the ones that they felt comfortable with, that they have good information to share. And like you said, there, it, it takes a lot of time to plan figure out what people want, plan, and then provide even one hour sessions every month out of people's day, you know, and you're just doing it for your own IU where we were able to hit, a, you know, a great deal more admin mm -hmm. coaches um, in this model here, you know, but with less work on the individual. And right. able, the other nice piece about that was the discussion that we held, you know, and you give them a little bit of the time to talk, they, we're seeing a different perspectives, you know, from even outside our region, getting new ideas within that discussion. Mm -hmm. You know what, Megan, we haven't allowed for any questions. Um, we, we've covered three different sections so far. Does anybody have any questions about um, either the coaches getting together uh, physically or through these monthly uh, meetings or how we got at administrators together? We'd love to take some questions. We'd be happy to share also any ideas. How can you connect to other coaches? Um, so are you a building coach? If you're a building coach, I would say your ability to connect to other coaches is going to come through your IU facilitator, your external facilitator. So whatever IU region you're in, that's the person that you'd want to say, hey, I want to connect to some other coaches either in 
this IU region or another IU region, but that's really how you're going to connect. Attending meetings like this uh, can help you connect, though it's hard because they used to be in person, which was much greater, right? And then like you, you would see people gathering and talking, um, but that connection really has to happen at your IU level, I would say. And um, Brad or Megan? Yeah, absolutely. I think your local facilitator within your IU8 region probably has a list of all the coaches, all the schools, all the coaches they're working with and be able to match you up if you want support with a school that's similar to get ideas. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Though we would be happy to connect you also. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Megan, I can't remember if we have our emails at the end. We do. Um, okay. So, absolutely, you're free to email any one of us and um, we would be happy to connect you also to schools that we have. And the other thing I'll, um, if you reach out, when you reach out to your IU facilitator, um, you can reference any of our IUs. We all have a list of facilitators from all the IUs and ways of connecting kind of behind the scenes. But also don't be afraid to ask specific questions or topics that you want to connect with, because that's something, again, I don't know that we've highlighted it in our slides now that I'm reflecting on it, is that if I had a coach that reach, would reach out to me and say, listen, we're struggling with some agendas or we're struggling with, um, you know, getting our meetings down in 30 minutes. Do you have a coach that does a good job of that? Do you have a school that does a good job of that? Um, and you know, if I don't have one in IU eight, I would reach out to IU 11 and, and 10 and say, Hey, and so, you know, just starting those conversations yeah. is, is part of uh, key component. Megan, I'll give an example. Uh, last month I had a coach reach out to me. It's a secondary school and they wanted to start a school store and she didn't even know when to, how, where to start, like how many what would the value of things be? What kind of things would you buy? She just was starting at ground zero. And I couldn't think of another high school where we had a school store just at the moment. So I reached out to IU 8 and 11 and Megan gave me the name of a school and the name of the coach. And so I wrote back to my coach and I said, here's a coach of another high school that has a school store. And I I could probably fill a page with the number of times we've connected schools like that. They reach out, have a question. If we don't, if I, if we don't know something, then we've got a network that we reach out to. All of your facilitators that you work with have a network. And I'll, as far as there's another question, if the state is planning on rolling this out to other, like this is a. This is something we started at, and I say we, they, it was before my time again, started at the IU, um, kind of, uh, I guess you could refer to it as a grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, reaching out to your facilitator at your IU um, and mentioning them. And again, you can, we're going to give our contact information at the end. You can give them our contact information and say, you, you know, participated in this today and we're interested if they would be, you know, willing to start in your area. Uh, here are th four great resources to help you start it in our area. That answers all the questions. Yeah, just another piece of the puzzle there is uh, prior to the shutdown, um, IU8, when we were first kicking off and rebuilding our PBIS teams and our schools in our region, we used to do site visits. So we had schools and Don Moss had great schools that were implementing with Fidelity that would allow our teams to go up, take a tour, talk to the building admin, talk to the coaches, the PBIS team. And also a lot of it was a uh, secondary team. So we, they would talk to the student teams. And actually, we go up and they would do a great job and the students would do the presentation for our people that were interested or the people that were implementing and wanting to know more about implementing, especially at that secondary level. So that networking there was fantastic because schools had the ability to get out and see what was happening in other buildings, you know, um, 
before they started to kick off and get great ideas for that initial training piece. I mean, that, that the teams that you had up there that would do that when we were able to, was, they were fantastic. So. Yeah, so additional connecting admin topics throughout the years, you could see. And we would actually survey our admin. A lot of times we would send out a, a survey link to see what they were interested in. And then also who would be willing to present on various topics if they were doing things uh, good, we'd ask them to present. But you can see those advanced tiers. That's always key, you know. People start out at that tier one. Now what? You know, data is always a big thing. New pieces that we're working with, like like uh, Dawn said, in the aggregate region, restorative practices. We've had uh, some of our staff trained in restorative practices. Now we're going to turn out, turn it around, and figure out you know ways that they can build that into their multi-tiered system of support. There, so we had the principal panels, tips, different stages of implementation, the matrix. You know. Um, when things turned around there, you know, figuring out how do we do it in a hybrid model, how do we do it virtual, and then how do we bring it back face to face, you know. So there was various topics that we connected throughout the years, um, and we, like I said, we used principles and we used other sources of people to present. Um, like the, on our next slide, uh, when we go back to in-person admin networking, we went to IU10 and we were fortunate to secure Clay Cook to do. He zoomed in and um, he gave us uh, an in-person advanced tier um, implementation uh, session. It was phenomenal. He did a great job and he, he opened a lot of people's eyes and gave us a lot of good information. And then we were able to do breakouts with the admin to um, discuss different topics there. And I think everybody learned a lot that day, but Clay, well, we're trying to secure him for future dates because he's just a wealth of knowledge. Um, so, you know, we were able to provide, I think, a lot of good resources, uh, you know, watching the different admin networking. They were taking the names and phone numbers. And, you know, when they were going back, they were going to stay in touch and use, you know, the, the people that they met there as a new resource to help them and guide their process and implementation because, even though you start out, you know, you go through your troubled times, you start implementing well, you're implementing with fidelity, things change, you know, and that's the key piece about PBS. We always have to be adjusting and making the changes, you know, just when you think you have something done uh, right, it changes and we got to mix it up a little bit. So that is the key right there is being flexible, willing to admit that things aren't going to stay the same and always be good and figure out new and innovative ways to implement with the changing times. Right. Brad, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, even though we want to highlight the good things, like Brad says, I love the good, the bad, the ugly, because we have got to share our journeys and, and missteps we've taken and things we wish we would have done differently. Um, and the other thing I want to mention in case I forget is that another benefit of doing these projects together is that you can split the cost. And if you're a school district, that probably doesn't matter to you. But if you're an IU facilitator like we are, and you want to bring Clay Cook in for an hour, that might cost more than you can do for just one IU. Uh, and so it's nice that in all these projects, we split the cost uh, in doing that. That's how we can even afford, I think, to, to do things sometimes. And sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly with this one, um, the attendance was uh, a variable. We had several, um, again, when we're talking about administrators get called um, out, uh, couldn't show up. They weren't even able to get out of their building um, to attend. And so, you know, in the future, as we plan these events, we talk again, you know, about how we can improve them, things we can do. And that's certainly something we're looking to uh, improve as we move forward, kind of how we can um, secure uh, admin uh, availability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it in December. And so part of it we thought was illness. They're like, I'm covering classes. I've got teachers out sick. So 
No, that's one of the things we've got to look at is when we do it, how we do it. So. All right. Um, so we have, as you, as you saw, that we have started collaborating in 2015 as far as coaches. Also, and Brad mentioned that uh, schools have visited other schools. So we did uh, have a high school that was uh, visited several times through schools throughout the state. It was an early implementing high school with fidelity. And so that is why uh, many people came to the area for that. But in 2015, you know, training high schools and using PBIS is very different in secondary schools than in elementary schools. And so what was happening is IU 11 had never trained a high school, but they had three high schools they needed to train. And we were looking at training three high schools. So we uh, worked together. We brought those six high schools together and we trained our six high schools together. And at that time, the state had just put out some new materials on training secondary schools because it is different. We used to train secondary schools the same way we train elementaries, and we have learned lessons from that. And so we trained collaboratively, and that was a really good experience. And I'll just share one experience uh, that came out of that. So. When we train schools, we train for five days. And I know other unit, other places go for three days, but we do five. And on day three, what we did is we moved our training space to the high school, to Belfont High School, uh, where they had strong fidelity of implementation. And so our day three was actually in a building where it was happening. Our principals could talk to their principal. The students could, and here's what we asked. Those six schools that were just learning about PBIS, we asked them to bring kids with them that day. So they brought probably five to six kids each. And these kids was the first information they had about PBIS. And they came and spent the day. So the kids spent the day with each other. The adults spent the day with other adults, and it was a, a really great experience uh, to be able to do that and actually go and train in a building where it's happening. Any questions about that? Do, do you have, do you feel like in your areas you have the ability to visit other schools? We've got plenty of time for people to unmute. Or use the chat. Because if you don't, that's really a great thing to be able to do is to go visit another school and see what things they have going on to see it in action is really awesome. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is something that we all love. And um, as we said, as external coaches, facilitators, we have a state network. And we know where we can go when we have questions. So we knew, I really appreciated that state network. and. I knew how important that was to us. And see, we told you, we started getting coaches involved in networking together. We started getting administrators. And I really think the thought of the Student Summit, we started in 2017 with the Student Summit, which I'm going to explain to you. I really think it was on the burner yes. since about 2012. We had to wait till we had more high schools and middle schools implementing before we could do this next project that I'm gonna talk about. And so we knew the benefit of having a network because we had each other uh, and we were getting admin together and coaches. We also knew that there would be great power 
and getting students together. So in 2017, we started having what we call a student summit. And we did this in State College for two years. We did it at a church. We tried to find a facility that we could rent. And we brought the three IUs together. And we made this very much like an adult conference, meaning they could, there was a poster session. So schools could bring posters. And we had a whole area with poster session with posters where schools could talk about their stuff. Um, I'm sorry, Megan, I think that's later on one of your pictures also. But um, so we knew it was important for student teams to be able to talk to each other. And this conference that we do, we actually have the kids do the presentations. Uh, so they are learning from each other. And Megan, do you want to hit that agenda? Yeah, so here's an example. So we had two in person, must have been 17, 18. Then we had three in person. And then we had COVID. And then we tried to do them virtually for a couple of years. And this year we got back to in person. Thank goodness. But one of the things that we found is we really outgrew the facility with, that we were at. And we wanted to go to a college. We wanted that experience for our kids. So one year prior to COVID and this past fall, we were at Juniata College. And that was an absolute wonderful experience for kids. Uh, the planning of this, it used to take us a very long time. We used to start in the spring to plan for the fall. And now we have, we have things down pretty well that we start in about August uh, planning, though we do get our facility. Our facility is booked for next year already. How we found, Juni well, Juniata, it has a spring break, a fall break every October. And that is when we go during their fall break. So we're not competing um, with the students uh, that are there. And we plan together uh, as IU facilitators. We used to get together face to face. Now we're probably more like we do Zooms. We have had excellent support from Patton from the very first summit we've ever done. They were there in force in force. Uh, Catherine Poggi came from Pittsburgh. Laura Moran's come from Harrisburg. Nicole's come from here. Like we had a large group of patent people uh, supporting us. And then the year before COVID, I think, Megan, do you remember it was the AE, the alternative ed group, like they came in force to help us. AEDY. Um, AEDY. They brought a large team that supported us uh, the year before COVID. And so here's an example of the agenda that we have for the day. That, and so we do, we do have the registration and where they can set up their posters. We have a welcome. We introduce ourselves. And then we have a keynote speaker. And this year's keynote was Dr. Nicole Holland Sims. And this is actually the second year she's been a keynote for us. She's keynoted for us uh, twice. Uh, we've learned that she was a cheerleader in high school. She loves to dance and she loves to get the crowd moving. So uh, we, we have enjoyed having her with us. So we had a keynote, then we moved to a session. Then we have lunch and then we move to another session and then we have to close. We know we have to, it's really tight, accommodating when kids get to school and being able to get them home in time to catch their school bus or to practice for their sports teams. Uh, yeah, we'll show you lunch pictures, Crystal. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, sometimes <laughs> part of the favorite part of the day. Megan's <laughs> got some more she's gonna share about it. But yeah. Megan, can you go, Megan, do you talk about the sessions or do you yeah, want to show I it here? You do. Yeah, I, yeah, I okay. do talk about them. Then I'll then we'll skip to the next part. But and yeah, I, Krista, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, Megan. And I was just gonna say to tie that back to what Dawn said earlier about sharing cost. Um, we are fortunate enough that we our IUs have been able to um, support that. Um, 
at no cost uh, for the students. Um, but you could always, you know, work at cost or, you know, mm -hmm. that's, again, something to, to kind of problem solve around. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah. So what we did is those first two years when we were at a church, we brought we brought in salad, pizza and cookies. And that cost was low. We had to rent the building and then we had that low cost. Well, then it just got too large for us. And the idea of going to college was an excellent idea. And our cost went up. Each IU pays about twenty five hundred dollars. The college is a minimal fee for us. And it's really the lunch uh, that that cost us. So um, like we said, this is an opportunity for kids to learn from each other. And so if Megan, can you go to, does that say agenda? Yeah, that's not what I wanted, Never mind. Um, on the call, we have Sarah Strauss, who's one of our coaches at Central Mountain Middle School. And I asked her if she'd be willing to share how her how she and her students have felt. And they've presented for us several times. Uh, but Sarah, can you share, unmute yourself and share? Yes, thank you, Don. Um, our student team, I'm at a middle school and we currently have fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth graders. And our student team presented this year and we presented that year of COVID to 2020 uh, and they love it. We take um, a, a select group. Um, students let us know if they are interested from our student team and then we choose from there uh, and we work with them. They create the presentation. So we work with them ahead of time and they create the presentation. We don't do it for them. Um, and we work with them to do that. And it is wonderful. It's so great to see our students being the leaders, right? Because we should see ourselves as the facilitators of this. And really they are leading and they are, um, I mean, just having the student team is awesome because they're leaders in our school and they want to do um, fun things for our students and reward them and recognize them. And it's great. But then for them to step up and be a leader to, to, to show other schools that and to tell other schools about that is wonderful. Um, and uh, we've even taken them to the school board and presented that too. Uh, but it was great. We had um, sitting room only, like standing room only. There were people sitting on the floor at the presentation. And yes, the lunch is the hit. <laughs> They love the lunches, um, but it's just so great to see the kids in action and to see them prepare for it, to see their nerves and then get them calmed down and for them just to do a great job. And they're just so proud of themselves. And then they come back with all the ideas too. They come back. I love how it's towards the beginning of the year um, because it, it gave us enough time to get prepared, but then they had the rest of the school year to take those ideas that they have and to work together to, to try to make good changes in our school and improvements. Um, so it's, it's invaluable experience for these kids and for the adults um, that participate in it. So I wanna thank you guys for holding it and I hope you don't stop. We hope we don't stop either. <laughs> thank you for, Dawn, you're muted. I see you talking. Yes. I'll, thank you, Sarah. Also, at that uh, student summit, the adults are all together. <clears throat> so during those breakout sessions, the adults are together and we're networking and we're learning and growing. This is just a, a little bit of sharing with you. Can you hit the uh, PBIS in action? So one of the things that we do when kids are coming in in the morning, there's a PowerPoint going and each school is featured. So we have positive quotes being shared and then each school that's participating, uh, we ask them to send in pictures of their school, send in pictures of their team. And that is on a rotating um, with music and that's on the rotating uh, screen as they come in and it's and it's very fun. Um, and then, like we said, we have had Melissa Duckworth as IU 10. She is 
presented for us before. Nicole Holland Sims has presented twice. Erica Caruder uh, has helped us. She ran the adult session uh, this last year, facilitated that. Judd Pittman has uh, joined us. And when these presenters come, they're highly engaging. They make the content really relatable to kids. And um, it really starts things out on a, on a great a great note. And like I said, I did not know that Nicole was a cheerleader in her previous life. So she's still kind of a cheerleader now, right? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. All right. Um, and so when we talk about um, I know we've hit some of this. Uh, those breakout sessions are run by student teams. Uh, they facilitate, we get them kicked off, introduce them, but then that student team facilitates. Students have a choice, much like, and I think, again, we talk a lot about student voice and student choice. Um, they have a choice with what sessions they can attend. Um, and what sessions uh, they get resources from. And it's nice to hear some of the conversations going on. Like you'll see a team from a school talking, I'm gonna go to this session, I'm gonna go to this session, what session, so that they're, again, like we do as adults, right? We, when we are able to go to uh, a training, um, bring back those resources to your school and hear those um, students start to talk about that is um, really incredible how they're gonna share that. Students are very open in the sessions about what has worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, where their setbacks were. Where they are asked to present for about, um, for part of it, and then open for questions afterwards. And every year um, we do uh, try to switch up the sessions. There's obviously some themes, acknowledgement is usually one of them, kickoff assemblies is usually one of them, some, some, something along those lines but um, gathering feedback. Topics that we've used, like I said, um, they change, they vary somewhat, but improving buy-in from students and adults. Um, it's amazing how these student teams can really be empowered for change in their schools. And so they are can be instrumental in helping facilitate adult buy-in. Um, and I can't remember if Sarah said that or Dawn had said about going to school board meetings, going to faculty meetings and presenting on their perception. Um, and so, you know, improving that adult and student buy-in, incentives and acknowledgement, overcoming obstacles. When we had to switch to um, virtual, we talked about um, how, what those student teams are, were doing within their schools to help transition school-wide to a virtual setting. Um, assemblies, events to support PBIS. Um, like I said, the students are able to uh, present and it's nice to see all the different ways, like some will do PowerPoint, some will do um, different social interactions. Some, the whole team will get up there and have parts of it. Some will just be a couple. Here's uh, Glendale presenting some. Uh, they talked about their kickoff assemblies. Duniana Valley, again, a nice uh, job. They had a PowerPoint that day, so they talked about where they came from. That's the other thing, um, which is neat in our day and age. They get to connect with each other, and I think a lot of times those connections go beyond that day. Um, and... Uh, um, there's Northern Bedford. Again, they're open to questions at the end. And the amount of engagement, like I always, you know, as a presenter, I get anxious, like, okay, we'll leave time for questions. And then no one will ask any, right? And then you're like, oh, um, the amount of engagement, the questions we get, the thoughtful answers we get from the presenters, um, is really a great uh thing to see. And again, um, the engagement, we did have sitting room only, uh, or standing room, sitting on the floor room on, only. And then like we talked about, uh, there are posters and Brad's going to talk about our poster displays along with the live sessions. Yeah. So when we started this, um, 
in our first annual event of the PBS, we asked them to bring posters. And we actually did um, set it up and then we gave them time to kind of do a gallery walk to do the posters. So we asked them to have somebody there and um, highlight the good things that they're doing so that people could walk around and ask questions. Now, as this evolved, and it grew to be a really large event and you know trying to plan for that start and end time because we have schools traveling a long ways we ask them to bring posters but they get to look at it a little bit between sessions you know between the opening and uh session the kickoff session and the different pieces there but we still ask them to bring posters and schools are very proud of what they do um with the poster displays so moving on you're talking about lunch lunch being the highlight of the day so um at the college junior the college they have a really good cafeteria the kids love it um i know that the first time that we went there prior to the shutdown that you know the uh actually the cafeteria staff at the junior came up to me and said you know these kids are more well behaved than any of the college kids that come in here they're so respectful so polite they go around and it was really neat to see that because the kids loved it and gave them that experience of being on college because they had the choice of a whole bunch of things. So like Dawn said, we split the cost up. So right now, um, IU11, they set a contract up with uh, Juniata College with the facilities and the lunch. Like Dawn said earlier, the, the uh, facilities is minimal. We pay a little bit of uh, money for to put down, put on the facility and some tech support and access to the tech. But the biggest cost of the day is that a lunch. Um, we get we had over 300 people attend, so they were counting how many people we had attend, you know, and then they just bill us after the fact. So what we do as IU consultants is we get a ballpark figure how much we think is gonna it's gonna cost, and we submit that to our director. And then we get that board approval that it's okay. So I know that in the questionnaire, how do we pay? Um, I don't know exactly what fund ours comes out of uh, our director takes it we get a board approval and then they pull it out of a different fund i doubt it's idea funds because of idea funds won't allow you to pay for food so i'm thinking it's more of our general budget funds but that's where that comes out of so lunch big highlight kids like the free lunch i know at the beginning ones that like once we had pizza and that we had a few extra pizzas uh at the end of the day and we were raffling them off kids were loving it they were taking out one up box but you feed them, they like it, you know, kids like whatever, just have a food. And as you can see the pictures there, I mean, the place was packed. I mean, we had over 300 kids, all the tables were packed, but there was no issues. Kids sat there and networked with each other. You know, us as facilitators were able to get on and I ate lunch with different kids from around the region, was able to talk to them. And, you know, it's a great experience learning from kids and seeing their perspective and what they need. So when we go out, and we train teams, we can take that with us to share with the adult teams. And just different pictures there. And so as Dawn kind of alluded to earlier, um, when we're in person, uh, we have advisor sessions that happen do during our uh, student summits. And so each um, as you're setting up your PBIS team, as you know, you have uh, typically teams will have a student advisor on their team. And you can't just send a bunch of kids on the bus, you know, good luck at Juniata College, come back at 2.30, you're sending a chaperone. And so we really wanted to be intentional about engaging the coaches. We have a great resource and engaging the advisors um, and giving them an opportunity to network uh, and connect. And so um, when we switched, we had that two years where we had to do virtual. We actually had this conversation where we went back and forth. At that point, they didn't need chaperones. So do we kind of pull them out and say, okay, have your kids log on, but we don't need to do a session with you. Um, you know, we're not going to have anything for you. Uh, and I think what we found out from that is that they, the advisors really enjoy that opportunity to get together and talk about different ways that they support um, their Megan, looking, 
I'm sorry. Yes. Looking at this picture reminds me there was a high school, and I don't remember what high school it was, out of our outside of our IU region that brought four people, and they were thinking about PBIS, and they asked if they could come, and so we did allow them to come, and then we probably had four IU consultants not within our region also attend. Yes, yes, yes. I believe I want to say somebody from IU 28 was there as soon as the high school. Yeah. And Al was Becky there Dalton. and Irene was there and mm -hmm. I can't remember who else. Yeah. And they really had what was really nice was uh, that they were, you know, getting information from the teams that we work with and asking a lot of questions about, you know, how they can make it work at their building, you know, so. So again, we try to take the opportunity to, as the students are picking sessions, connecting the advisors and providing support. And I think Don had mentioned, or Brad had mentioned earlier, Dr. Karuder uh, actually led those sessions um, this last time. And at the end of our student summit, we then get feedback from uh, students. And here's some of it. Um, you know, more breakout sessions or one big breakout session for everyone to collaborate more time to talk to other schools so again really looking at that networking um you know we talk about life skills right you know uh social emotional learning i was in that session um previous to this one and and being able to network and learn from others is something that you'll use your entire life and so even having kids uh, reflect on how important that was more breakout more interaction time to listen so with that, are there any questions about anything we uh, do? Again, the point of today was really to highlight you're not on an island to try to leverage your connections, whether it is whether you're a facilitator and can connect to other facilitators, whether you're a coach and connect to other coaches and leveraging your facilitator at your IU um, to help with some of those connections. <laughs> 